plata o plomo. A group of 30 islands that are generally referred to as the Islas de Rosario can be found approximately an hour's sail northwest of the historic Spanish port city of Cartagena de Indias. They are a genuine tropical paradise because of the pristine beaches that have been bleached white, the turquoise waters, and the rich fauna. Every day of the year, hundreds of people, both tourists and locals, make the journey from Cartagena to La Playa Blanca for a day trip. But if you sail slightly farther into the Caribbean Sea, you'll find an island where the culture and the way of life have mostly stayed unchanged for hundreds of years. About 800 people make their homes in La Isla Grande, where they are largely self-sufficient through fishing and farming as a result of being cut off from the rest of the world. In places where there is neither running water nor electricity, daily life continues to revolve primarily around the rising and setting of the sun. However, this idyllic setting did attract the interest of a tourist who constructed a palace there, which has since been deserted. That would be the infamous Pablo Escobar, the legendary El Patron, who was known as the King of Cocaine. Welcome to Billionista. If you love videos about luxury living, please subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a video. And don't forget to like and share too. In the 80s and 90s, Pablo Escobar was a major player in the drug trade. While he was growing up, he became notorious in his village for a variety of illicit actions, including stealing. His criminal career progressed unabated, and he eventually rose to the position of boss at the notorious Medellin cartel. They were smuggling almost 15 tons of illegal narcotics every day into the United States at one point. By 1989, he was estimated to have amassed a fortune of $30 billion. Escobar was one of the wealthiest guys in the world at the time, and boy did he show it. He was a proud owner of a whopping 15 private planes, 6 helicopters, and a slew of high-end automobiles. Indeed, the rubber bands they used to keep their money together cost Escobar $1,000 a month at one point. According to his brother, so much money was in their possession that they had no choice but to bury it. But that resulted in rats feasting on it. Indeed, they would write off 10% of their annual earnings in their financial records as a consequence of their knowledge that this money would be eaten by rats. That works out to $2.1 billion a year in rat food. Escobar was known to own property in Miami. In fact, one of them recently ended up selling for about $10 million. His other property was Hacienda Napoles near Porto Trio a little village about 93 miles east of Medellin, Colombia. It is a 7.7 square mile estate, and his most renowned mansion is located here. It has been subject to extensive remodeling over the years, but it had its own zoo in its heyday. When it was filled with giraffes, rhinoceros, elephants, and even a dinosaur exhibit including real dinosaur remains, today the residence can be explored by tourists as a kid-friendly theme park. In 2006, it was valued at $5.5 billion. However, we'd like to focus on a less well-known but no less pricey property in today's video. It's famous for the wild and extravagant parties it used to host and for being Mr. Escobar's summer retreat. Today, it serves as a type of relic for Pablo Escobar. This hidden vacation house has been deserted for quite some time and contains nothing except the wild flora and animals that call its white stone walls home. The magnificent manor that once belonged to Pablo Escobar is commonly referred to as La Casa Grande, which literally means the big house in Spanish. It is located on Isla Grande, an island in the Caribbean that at first glance doesn't seem to be home to anything particularly noteworthy. This little piece of heaven is only a few kilometers long, and the only way to get here from Cartagena is on a boat that's been specifically chartered for the purpose. As soon as you have arrived on the island, your safest choice is to inquire with the locals as to the location of La Casa Grande. You won't be able to locate directions on the web, and there won't be any signs directing you there either. You'll locate this fabled house after a hike of a couple of hours through dense jungle. After the trees have thinned out, 
you will find an old trail that leads to the magnificent white walls of La Casa Grande, or at least what is left of them. However, in contrast to Escobar's other estate, Hacienda Napoles, La Casa Grande has not been given the same level of care and attention. There is no amusement park to be found here. There is no zoo that caters to families, and you likely won't see another soul on the site. After Escobar's demise, the Colombian government assumed ownership of his assets and ignored La Casa Grande for decades. But before we move on to the next part, I just want to ask you guys, would you travel to this secret island mansion or are you quite happy to just see it on video? Let us know in the comment section below because I want to hear from my viewers and get that conversation going. And now, back to the video. As you explore the grounds of La Casa Grande, you will come across an abandoned swimming pool surrounded by crumbling cottages that at one time boasted an unobstructed view of the ocean, but they are now nothing more than a pale reflection of their past splendor. The docking area for the speedboats used by visitors would have been just here. However, you won't find any functioning speedboats anywhere in the area. But back in 1989, one of Pablo Escobar's luxury speedboats would have cost around $187,000. You'll also notice the plants that have colonized virtually every available space in the estate, whether they are outside or inside. If you take a stroll around the once majestic gardens, you'll probably come across wild pigs gorging themselves on the flora as they enjoy their midday meal. A horrible end for such a stunning residence, which in its glory would have easily been able to compete with the price of Escobar's other great property, Hacienda Napoles. It is somewhat unfortunate that such a magnificent piece of architecture has been allowed to fall into disrepair. Keep in mind that this was meant to be a party house, a summer vacation spot for the boss of the Madeline Cartel. It is the perfect setting for one of the wealthiest men of the 1990s to unwind and have some time to himself. When it was at its peak, there were more than 300 rooms that had been elegantly created and were completely equipped for people to visit and party in. This includes the solid gold shower heads that can be found in each of the bathrooms, which are estimated to have a worth of $1,400 each. But when you're worth $30 billion, that's really just a drop in the ocean. Before, if you wanted to visit La Casa Grande, you had to either take a fancy speedboat or alternatively, you could fly in. The landing strip is still there, but if you believe you can just fly over and land there now, you are mistaken because it does not comply with current requirements. Escobar was well known for employing a large number of bodyguards at the location, all of whom were armed and ready to fire their weapons at anyone who entered the premises unauthorized by Escobar. Mr. John Harrell Velasquez was considered to be one of the more brutal of his bodyguards. Velasquez was also famous for his nickname, Popeye. However, there are no longer any bodyguards of any kind protecting the home now. The island has been left to itself for the most part over the years, and about 800 residents have managed to live their lives there as farmers and fishermen, paying little attention to the enormous manner was known to host some of the noisiest parties in the world. We believe that things are probably better this way. It is an unquestionable fact that Escobar was a criminal. Yes, he was famous for donating a portion of his wealth to those who were less fortunate than himself, gaining him the notoriety of being a kind of contemporary Robin Hood. But nice deeds like that do not absolve him of a life spent breaking the law. On December 2, 1993, Pablo Escobar died leaving behind not only the entirety of his immense money but also his enormous mansions as well. A lot of it remains buried beneath the ground to this very day. It has been said that tens of millions if not hundreds of millions in cash are still missing and just waiting to be found. During the time that Pablo Escobar was the head of the Madeline cartel, he was known for many things. Some people refer to him as a villain a drug lord, a smuggler, and a vicious criminal. Despite this, there were many who praised him and compared him to that latter-day Robin Hood. Regardless of how you feel about the individual, you can't deny that he lived his life to the extreme. 
as seen by the fact that he built a secret mansion deep among the thick vegetation of Isla Grande. However, much like Escobar himself, this mansion saw a fall from power. You are able to go there yourself these days if you are courageous enough, but it won't be an easy task. Even though it won't look anything like it did back in that day, you'll be standing exactly where Escobar himself used to hang out and have a good time, but don't expect it to be anything like it was. So billionistas, would you choose to renovate the mansion or leave it behind just like what happened to it today? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this time. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.